complaint, present or protest to the court or internal party power struggle. What motivated Croatian war veterans to hit the streets? Croatia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry for a long title. Um, my my editor was when I was working as a journalist was probably stronger than for this. Not more than five words. Um, so um, I'm talking about the the war Croatian war veterans of the 90s war. Uh, so, just briefly, the, the, the Croatian uh, War of the 90s is referred to as the Holman War. This is how it's mostly remembered publicly. It is how it's remembered officially. It's officially named like that. It was in, in the Constitution, in, in other legal documents. So, it functions as a pivotal historical event in Croatian, Croatian history. That's how it's presented. It's the moment where the 900 or 1,000 years long dream of Croatian independent state was finally realized. Uh, therefore, it, it serves as a nation, nation building myth, which uh, basically is, uh, uh, was uh, created through the 90s, during the war, after the war, uh, by um, politicians, but not only politicians, by War veterans by uh, different groups, by the church, by the by the education, uh, and by um, intellectual intellectual. So, and it serves um, um, the war itself has a very strong, very strict uh, narrative about what happened, which is both dominant and also again official. Because in Croatia there is something um, which is called the Declaration on the Homeland War, which basically describes the event as it happened along with some additional declaration for the declaration of the Operation Storm. And which is very, of course, um, kind of, it's not nuanced in any way, it's very cleansed of things that are not uh, particularly easy to, uh, uh, to deal with. For example, the um, episode of the war in Bosnia, and we are talking about the most, the, the, the eastern scene of Croatia to be the Bosnia Croat conflict. That thing is completely wiped out of those official documents. And it's only the part that is mentioned is the part of the 1995, because it's the, part, the only part that has had international approval. It had the approval of the formal state, the, the Bosnian Herzegovina. So, um, war veterans themselves uh, in Croatia are referred to as defenders, frankly. Uh, which already shows how all those terms are um, in everyday use, they're quite loaded. So, because then, you know, if you're asking about the defender, what happened with the, the war veteran who fought against um, Bosniaks in, in, you know, in central Bosnia, was he also fighting for, um, was he also defending the homeland, uh, defending, you know, some greater or uh, bigger Croatia? War veterans themselves are um, organized in numerous associations, over a thousand of them, with a small just mark just that. Um, a lot of them are actually branches. So those branches, at some point, they were not, um, at the beginning, a lot of them didn't have a legal entity, but then at some point, and that's what they told me themselves, they actually uh, organized them in that, this fashion because it's much easier to attract funds. Because when you're a, a legal entity, it's much easier to kind of finance for local budgets. Because if you're a, lo if you're a national association, it, it goes in a different way. So, it, it, well, Croatia it has a developed welfare system, systems, uh, one of the most developed um, in general. Probably. It's sometimes it's put in, in comparison with the Korean one and with the Israeli one, sometimes with the US one. Um, and um, uh, veterans themselves, and, sorry, not veterans, veterans associations themselves, are connected to um, parties, mostly on the right wing, um, but also church, academia, and the state itself. Sometimes they are really connected with certain persons and in certain institutions like the War Veterans Ministry, or uh, it could be the mayor, or for example, the deceased, the late mayor of Zion, uh, you know, Banish, who's really connected with some of the associations. And um, of course, they play uh, the role of the main memory entrepreneurs, or one of the main memory entrepreneurs, of the war, and also sometimes they take the, the, the role of the retail players in the sense that they are 
vetoing something that they sh think should not be uh, implemented some policies. And it's not strictly only policies on the homeland war, for example. They were also active, if I remember, on the initiatives to uh, introduce uh, civic education and also on the introduction of the sexual and health education as well. So because they went and like they were they were uh, playing as an actor there and they were like uh, acting in that. So uh, political links, uh, just more on that. So um, they have strong political links. Most of them have or have on with the main party of Croatian politics for the last 30 years or the most dominant, predominant party, which is the uh, um, center right, right wing, dependent on some period, Croatian Democratic Union, which uh, Nebuch already mentioned. And I, for example, I'm also there from the beginning connected to the, 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 the institutions. One of the institutions, there were two institutions were the most important. Uh, sorry, it's not there. Uh, uh, it's the, uh, it was the defense ministry at first, because before we didn't have all that defense ministry until 1998. So the first the defense ministry was as a defense ministry and the whole veteran ministry itself. And there was this one crucial person, which was called Boyko Shushek, the defense minister. And the other, and he's like on the top of the, uh, you know, um, of the chain of command. And that was the late 90s president, uh, Croatian president, Franjo Tuzman. So basically, um, uh, in their kind of world, the war veterans, Shushek and Tuzman are above everything. So they are they have special positions. They're not even referred to as politicians, as if they were not elected, but you know, as a messiah in a way. Especially Tuzman is a messiah and you know um, uh, probably Shusha would be his, I don't know, how Saint Peter. Saint Peter <laughs> like that. So, yeah. Uh, although like in this case Saint Peter died before uh, Christ or before that so uh, because he died a year before Tuzman. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, thanks for that, Rebecca. Uh, so they sometimes they work as part of political organizations. So you're not sure if they are entirely only NGOs or they are having really concrete politics that they are trying to implement. Um, and it's also connected. Their role is connected with the HZS um, HZS um, um, will to kind of. Uh, devour the state. So in the 90s, there was this uh, kind of uh, rhetoric coming from the HZ, from President Tuzman, that only HZ is some real Croatia, that every all other parties are not, as they even use it today, which means a state founding, I think, state founding party. So, and therefore, the veterans were also kind of um, uh, covered by this process. And that's why a lot of those people are. Uh, members of the HZ, there are even MPs of the HZ. We all know about Hydra and Josip Jakic, who is a very kind of influential HZ and a uh, member of parliament, uh, who is the head of the biggest or the, the most known uh, at least association. For example, um, but it was interesting that the, immediately some in the state institutions saw this potential for kind of attracting more veterans. I found a document from 1993 when one of the biggest associations was, was formed, which was called um, uh, the, the Association of Croatian Veterans of the Homeland War, which is uh, run by Juro Dec for the last uh, 26 years. And when it was formed in 1993, they were asking for Tujman to be a sort of a, um, to give them a blessing, you know, to kind of, you know, um, uh, to support them politically. That's what all the associations were doing. And there was a, a document that I found in the presidential archives, which one um, uh, associate in the office writes to another few reasons why he thinks that they, that they have to kind of jump on this. First reason is that um, either we help, we help them or somebody else does. So it's better that we help them and so that we have the upper hand. Also, uh, it's, a, it's, it's great because this association has the tendency to form as an umbrella association. So, under that, we'll control everybody else. So, and uh, the third one was, I think that there is a great possibility for their use in political purposes. It's a very bureaucratic, very neutral kind of like, you can't read much of it, but you can see uh, that, there, that there were some really uh, political links uh, uh, there at, place, at 
a place. So, so we are ending the war in 1996 and it's time to pay the dues. So it's time to completely compensate war veterans. Uh, Croatia is in a very bad financial situation. It's, it's, uh, the, the state is looking for uh, funds from the International Monetary Fund. And of course, what the IMF always suggests, cut the social benefits. And one of the biggest social benefits at that time were uh, supposed to be war veterans. So, um, the war veterans themselves are in, um, um, a lot of them are in very precarious or very tough uh, social and economic position because a lot of them, and you can find this in testimonies, not, not in my work per se, but you can find it in, on documenta, for example, in their personal memories. We say, like what Regent says, while well, we were uh, at the front, our company disappeared. So when they come back, there are no more companies. There's nothing to come back to, and they're basically the only way that they can find their place is by social benefits, by some sort. So they, in the beginning, they're still kind of optimistic that they can get some jobs, but very quickly they see that those jobs are not only distributed to war veteran um, and credentials, but also to, of course, the all this in Croatia, political affiliation. So they see that other people are getting the, uh, their demands met. So, but as the state is built on the Holman War, uh, as it's built on this kind of role of war veterans as the most important aspect of that war, they cannot be ignored. No, they had the upper hand in, you know, they cannot be ignored on a symbolic level. So, uh, uh, and then uh, the whole kind of uh, veteran movement, all those associations, as well as media, intellectuals, uh, some other conservative associations in the church, but very kind of, um, church is very, um, uh, let's say, timid about the whole thing there. They kind of, they, which is actually interesting that sometimes the church actually, uh, sometimes they represented the, the, the marginalized uh, presence, which was just, for example, Branko uh, Borkovic, the, the little hog. Uh, he's one of the, the defenders of the, the of, yeah, that's his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> little, 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 then, you know, the kind of Bukharic, I think that's even the new book of Bukharic, uh, his memoirs, that he met, meets with him, and then the, 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 the associations which are closer to the HZ are pissed, because now, you know, somebody else is getting the blessing from a person that you cannot represent, because he's on the top of the, you know, um, the church. So. Um, so, the law of veterans, uh, uh, law of veterans is um, a form of the formalization of trauma. So they're basically trying to formulate their trauma into a new legal document, which they believe can, um, they, can, they can solve all of their problems. So they're always complaining that um, you have to know plenty laws to get your rights fulfilled. But uh, just newsflash, that's still existing for you have to you always have problems that you have to know 30 laws to resolve a single legal issue. There's a lot of stuff that can be resolved in one. So um, then this question appears, which is, is that what we fought for? You know, or I didn't fought, fought, fight for this country. So, and they claim this, um, they claim that they have the entitlement uh, and they are basically on in the process of transforming from an entitlement into a state, status. So, and they uh, literally say that their, the homeland was built uh, with the parts of their bodies. So the disabled veterans claim, I gave her uh, an R and a leg, or, you know, my health, or my mobility corporation. Basically, I put this in building some new national body. So therefore, you know, I need to be in a way, composite, and this, they formulated this in '96 as we don't want to be um, in a, pri a privileged group. We just want us to somebody to you know, put us in the same position as everybody else. It's like that um, picture with the three kids trying to watch a football game over the fence, 
So basically, they need this one or two boxes to come there on a level of this higher kid who can watch normally the, the, the football game. So, um, and they're um, trying to um, kind of um, formalize and institutionalize this narrative about the war. They're always kind of um, emphasizing why is their role uh, uh, an important one, why they have built, as I say, or created creation along with Franco Tujman, and why they should be um, kind of compensated. And a lot of them say, um, and that will appear in the second process that I'll analyze, uh, this kind of, if you think that uh, giving me some benefits while I don't have legs, is putting me in somehow, you know, privileged position, why don't you take mine? You know, why would you be uh, without legs and having, you know, um, rights to free welfare, for free, free healthcare, or, you know, customs uh, reduced on the important cars, or so ever. So, um, this is something that's kind of connected, and you can see this even uh, here. You maybe some of you noticed the, on the parking spots, you know, will you take my disability if you take my parking spot. So we have this in, in, in some other areas present as well. So uh, this, uh, so they, what they're doing in 96, that they are uh, fighting the politicians and the bureaucrats. So we have this formulation of a special narrative which basically condemns all the politicians and all the bureaucrats. So it's almost an anti-bureaucratic <laughs> Uh, revolution. Almost like when it's the same tropes. You see, have the same tropes of people who are there. They're not doing their jobs. They're just, you know, uh, they are, uh, of course, they're corrupt. They're there by political means. And Croatia also has this kind of anti Yugoslav, anti communist dimension, which they claim. And this is not only the claim of the veterans, of the veteran associations, but the Friday Vision himself, to say that those bureaucrats are leftovers from communist Yugoslavia who never wanted Croatia. And that's why they are uh, they are kind of, um, you know... Um, Putting obstacles in front of our... Yeah. yeah, so that's why they are kind of, you know, uh, not giving you all the rights. And while uh, veterans are the ones who are baptized in fire. So they are basically the ones, you have to go through a war to have a certain um, aura around you. And the only two persons are Bojkošić and Franja Tuzman. You know, they are, because they are uh, 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 the supreme commanders, they are seen as if they took the part of the war, as if, you know, they are more, they were more active than, for example, Minister of uh, Interior or, uh, for example, some MP or maybe some other state official. And, they are, um, um, you know, condemning all of those uh, bureaucrats, you know, deserters, cowards, you know, war for fears and so on. And they are playing, uh, playing with political mobilization themselves. They are saying, you know, if you will not represent us, you know, maybe we should model, maybe we should find, found a part of our own. And then let's see, you know, how AGZ will, um, you know, go in the next election. They can say, so, uh, a few times you have this narrative that they didn't fought for Croatia, they fought for HZ because they said basically, we won the war and we put this government in power. If there was no us, the government wouldn't be in power. And then they say, maybe we should, you know, formulate our own political, our own party agenda, party platform, and try to maybe compete with you, but, and then let's see, you know, uh, who will uh, come out uh, as a winner. The issue with that also, connected to that, is that they see Croatia as a state as their meaning, you know, as their meaning life. So they cannot say that they are against the states. So they can't be against the states. So they refuse to be saying we are protesting against the state, we are protesting against certain political elites, against politicians uh, and bureaucrats. Often, what they do, they don't mention specifically the names. So, but they mention the names who are not in there. And besides, um, for example, Franjuzman Bogusius, there are a few other uh, politicians, mostly on the right wing fraction of HZ plus Yelena uh, Posa, who are uh, excused of this kind of uh, not, you know, respecting veterans' rights. And 
Uh, what they're doing basically, the day in 96, they give the government 100 days since the state, uh, so they say, counting from the, uh, the Independence Day, which was just uh, less than two weeks ago, from the May 30th, you have 100 days to fulfill our rights, otherwise we're going to on, on a protest. And that was to be the first veteran protest, except a very, very small one, um, maybe not as important for this discussion. Um, and they give the government time to fully change the laws, uh, to uh, implement certain rights, to even uh, abolish any uh, war crime procedures against war veterans, to uh, pass a special constitutional law, to change the constitution, everything. And it's happening during the summer when the, basically the, the parliament's in that in session, uh, and it's not in session until like mid-September. And then, you know, it goes on, it goes on, and then they say we are going to have this protest. But the day before the protest, uh, what happens is they have this uh, an assembly of their own. So this one of the major associations here that you can see this becoming President Tushman is the uh, Croatian uh, Association of Disabled Veterans of the Homeland War, uh, popularly known as FIDRA, uh, which has its own assembly just the day before an announced protest at the St. Mark's Square, which is the square where the government and parliament and constitutional court are walking. So it's the kind of the the, the main political position in Croatian, that's in, in terms of uh, space. And what happens that Ryan Luchman visits the, uh, the, 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 this convention of the day before, and he kind of um, vouches them rights and benefits, and even invests politically and personally in that, saying, they will answer to me. So they will pass the law, they will do this, but they, I will check on them every, I don't know, months I'll check on the progress how it's going and not only on the law itself but the later on the implementation of it because a lot of them were complaining and part of them the full rights of the implementation implementation of those laws which are not implemented and it's again nothing strange for uh Croatian rights a lot of laws were not implemented fully. So um, and what Tushman serves, Tushman serves as a kind of a bridge between two fractions within the HZ and within the government. The one is this nationalist, uh, more uh, radical uh, um, group around Boyko Shisha, and the other are the so-called, we call them techno-managers. And those are the Prime Minister Matagranich and a few other people, Shkedro and you know, uh, 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 um, and so on, so not to show the names, and those two have different views of what should be done. So the first national one says, we'll give them anything they want, while the second one is trying to get some funds from the International Monetary Fund, so they're trying to find some middle ground between, and Tushman is above them all, so because Tushman has always had the idea of HZ of kind of being more of a movement than a political party, in the sense that they kind of uh, have uh, everything. They sometimes he even said, oh, we have the leftists, we have the rightists in our party, and you know, but they're all Croatian patriots, and that's what's important. So. Um, then the other day, the protest happened, but it's more of a protest of support. So it's a protest of support to the government to pass the laws and to help the veterans. And one of the main speakers is Dr. Shush. So he's come there. And not only do the processes are kind of, um, kind of controlled in that way, but it's also controlled that only FIDRA members can attend and a few other associations. Uh, citizens outside are not allowed to join in. Everything is cordoned by police. They're coming there with special, I think it was bracelets or something, you know, on a protester. And uh, so everything is in a highly controlled uh, 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 kind of uh, environment. And, you know, everything goes. Maybe, maybe better. Kind of stage that even the buses are paid by the defense ministry, so it's uh, it's it's a very stage, yeah, in a way. And, but um, to be fully uh, to be fully honest, some of those people who are there are not aware of this political stages. I mean, they're not aware of the stage. So, polit the, the the leaders of the associations are very much, you know, informed because they are members of the agencies usually, so they they know what's happening. So. And so basically it's, it's some sort of an exclusive protest and it's not what it was supposed to be when how it was announced as a protest, um, you know, that wants to turn down the government because there were some media speculations 
that basically going to Shushan wants to topple down the, uh, the, 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 the government. So this, uh, the left one is Federal Tribune, it's, uh, it's a uh, satirical uh, 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 weekly from the uh, Times, who said, who shows, going to Shushan, this is of course a photo montage, who saw the defense minister having a sign, you know, down with the minister. I'm done with myself. So, and the, the other one, are you pay, paying your records? But the records, as a term, is somebody repeating you. And also, it plays down with, uh, I think it plays with the Tuchman playing tank, but I'm not 100% sure. But probably because, because we had this, you know, uh, we'll change, yeah, we'll change, you know, whom for any stuff. So, uh, so um, yeah, so in a way, there, um, so you're not sure if this is a protest. Is this an intergovernmental power struggle, intra-party power struggle? What's happening there? So, but the, the important thing is that their trauma, their physical trauma, their their disability is kind of um, used uh, very concretely. It's, it's sort of a, a, a membership card. So you you if you have some sort of disability, it's not only uh, strictly physical, it could be the PTSD. Uh, although I have to kind of emphasize that back then there were a lot less PTSD confirmed cases. Uh, so uh, this is kind of your card of, you know, uh, going in. So moving back to 2014. So this was one of the kind of the, the slogans in 2014. This uh, is kind of um, uh, happening uh, under the special political situation in Croatia. Uh, it comes just after the, the protest against the Cyrillic signs in Bukwa, which Nebusha mentioned, in 2015, and this is this what's called in the liberal and uh, left media, it's called the, kind of the, the creeping uh, um, uh, um, uh, conservative uh, counter-revolution or, or revolution, which was staged uh, kind of partially by uh, the present invasion that by the time it was thought of Karamarko who didn't always directly kind of um, work with some of the associations, but you could see some links there um, which were going. For example, uh, so this uh, uh, protest in 2014 happens after uh, this uh, assistant to the minister, uh, Sinisha, uh, sorry, Boran Bovashvich, who is the son actually of a journalist, Danish journalist who was killed in Bukovar uh, Valchara, um, who on a some kind of a panel somewhere organized by some of the associations says that is it possible that we could have PTSD cases among the Serbian population as well? From Europe? That's a very kind of normal question. And then, you know, to defend him, um, the, 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 the war veteran minister, who is also from Bukovar, who was defending Bukovar and who was nine months in prison in Serbia and really went through a lot, says, um, I don't care if somebody fought against Croatia, but if his little son, Jovica, has a PTSD, he'll get the same uh, help as Kerle, or, you know, he's using a typical kind of Croatian name, has on the other side. I really don't care. You know, he's a civilian victim. So. And this, of course, opens a new trigger for the Red Association, and that's civilian victims. There's always this discrepancy between, um, you know, civilian and uh, victims and war victims, military victims. So, but it's also, uh, uh, it really quickly, you can see it's a battle for an interpretation of the, the Homeland War. So, and this uh, kind of type of protest is a typical, I would call it an ideal tip, uh, you know, kind of type of war witness protest, protest against central left government. So we have the early 2000s, you get it in 2013, the, the, the Cyrillic one, and you get this one in 2014, which actually lasted until 2016, up two months and something um, after the AZ comes to power again. So uh, it's kind of functioning in that sense. So what this uh, uh, protesters do, they start what they call as an uphold process in front of the World Veterans Ministry Zaga, and they make a tent, and they are very quickly labeled by the media the tent tent. Chaturash. So, and um, they are um, trying to ha, go form this tent as a as a tool for de-institutionalization. De de so they are claiming that they are the new 
place for veterans, not the war veterans ministry. So they basically are placed there saying, we are in charge, not them. So they are really not working for, for war veterans, we are. Um, and um, they are going back to some old uh, kind of tropes. And one of them is the defense of the dignity of the homeland war. And that was created um, already in the late 90s, but it was especially created in the early 2000s when the, the central government came to power first and when there were certain cases of um, uh, war crimes uh, committed by Croatian troops uh, kind of, um, uh, in certain people were indicted and so on. So um, they, um, uh, they, of course, very quickly shift from this, what you know, the war veterans minister said, his assistant, and they go into uh, different laws and in different, uh, you know, kind of, um, reasons why they are uh, um, why they are protesting but they're not very clear about it. there's a lot of cut off voting happening there and i've been there in the tent i don't know maybe a dozen times dozen times and uh, uh and it's very strange it's it's they're really it's 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 it really depends what they're saying who's asking who are the people around you know where they see some unfamiliar phrases they're kind of more uh, careful what they're saying when they see that our guys, you know, people that support our cause, even if they are journalists, then they say something else. So it's really kind of, um, in that sense, um, uh, kind of um, working in that way. So also, again, like in 96, they have been denying any privilege. And like, for example, one of the most uh, published uh, web portals, which is called Brankesi.hire, shows on the first day of protest massive photos of uh, wounds of disabilities, uh, soldiers with disabilities. So, and what happens so is this attempt to further institutionalize the homeland war. So it's not enough that we have it in the constitution. It's not enough that we have it in laws. It's not enough that we have it uh, in declarations. But we want a constitutional law on war veterans. Why is that so? First of all, it's symbolic importance. But it's not also only a symbolic importance. It's a very practical because you need two thirds of a parliament to change a constitutional law. That means that in a very, there is a very unlikely scenario in which ages and other right wing parties don't get at least one third of parliament. I think that will never happen. Uh, and in their lives, most surely won't. So uh, uh, they are thinking that this is a way to kind of limit any uh, deliberation on their rights and their position. So kind of let's, let's break that into a stone. That's it, you know, we're done. So that's the minimum. And again, what they're doing, and this is something that we hear basically every day, that the whole and war is a value. It's a value, it's like, like a democracy, like uh, liberalism, like uh, human rights, like, you know, the, you know, public pro property and everything. It's, 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 it's a value of itself. And what they do, they, you know, again, turn to this anti-political uh, kind of rhetoric. And this is the war veterans minister, Pedro Matic, who has gone through a lot. So he is a war veteran. And he's, uh, his trauma is downplayed. He is sultanized. Now by all, there are some war veterans who emphasize that he was a great war veteran, but he's a war minister, which, I mean, sounds like a legal, uh, like a legit comment. But some of them go that he was Ratting on other people in, in, in the camps, that he was uh, a coward, that he escaped, that he never fought, that, you know, all these things that can really easily be you know, checked because he has his own, you know, uh, 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 UN uh, ticket, you know, for coming out of the prison for like nine months. So, and what he basically told me in one interview, uh, he told me that was the problem from the beginning. Uh, this person is a quite he is a little bit of a maverick, so he says sometimes things that he didn't think think true twice. He's not a real politician at all, so he is like more of a war veteran than a politician. Because when somebody accuses you of your trauma being, you know, invented, you know, it's I, I, you can imagine people get very emotional. And he said to me uh, in one interview that he always imagined when a little kid that his crew, you know, as he says, from Google would come there to. You know, then to the then and say to the guys who are running the, the, the protest, you have five minutes to pick your stuff, and we are going to have a coffee with, with friends, you know, that's his nickname. And, and after we come back, we don't want to see any of you here. 
And because he said that they did this, that those guys would disappear. Because he's a part of a book of our defendants. And that has special status of its, of its own. It's not somebody who are not sure if he fought, when did he fought, was he in the back lines. No, this is the baptism of fire in its worst. So, but he said, but they never came. And they would privately call me and say, you know, Fred, you know that I support your case, and I know that you're a great guy, but I cannot come there. And, you know, it's all politics. You understand, you know? So it's kind of like, and also, what they have, what he has, and what all of them have, is a very macho type of kind of discussions. So it's, I, I destroyed this many tanks, you destroyed this many tanks, I spent so much time here, you didn't. Or, like, for example, when they wear uniforms, the, which will come later, the protesters, he said, you could tell me that we are wearing uniforms, I will bring out mine, and I have a lot of medals. So it's like all this kind of competition, very much is in that sense. So, um, and the question that kind of you see is, is this tank working in a sort of a, a Denkin's village? Is there a lot, a lot of other things happening inside of the site? And as I said, it happens within this uh, kind of market conservative revolution. Uh, it also is organized, that was kind of proof, uh, by some um, war veterans who had uh, intelligence, uh, intelligence in terms of intelligence agencies, connections, and connections to, for example, Milan um, Bandic, the mayor. And what is very interesting that it happens the day after Milan Bandic is arrested. So Milan Bandic is arrested in 2014 for the first time. The other day, you got a tent. And the whole discussion quickly turns to the tent in just two or three days. Then, but this is definitely not organized, that after two or three days, a person dies on a, on a protest. A certain person, uh, a female soldier, disabled one, dies from a heart failure uh, because she's there all night, she's exhausted, she dies. And that's then so. Then, you know, the whole kind of media, Focus goes there, you know, you have you know casualties. Then six days after, five days after, a guy burns himself, comes there, throws uh, kind of a gas or something and lights himself up. up. And you know, he's in the end with not so major, he's not he didn't end up with the umbrella, but you know, still it was a very gruesome, uh, very gruesome scene, and that kind of um, mobilizes a lot of people. Although very quickly, according to service, I mean, there are not, I think none of them were academically conducted, but you know, media surveys, a lot of people don't support the, 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 the uh, even the people who, who would consider themselves right wing don't necessarily uh, uh, support the, the protest. They support their issue, but they don't support the means. And um, what, um, so, but it would be wrongly to say that it was only politically mastering. It's very uh, hard to kind of point, pinpoint who is behind this and what, where's the agenda, where's the agency. Because it looks at a certain point that it's, if they were puppets for somebody else, they really gained control of their, they got free from their puppet master. So it is really possible that they were used at some point, but at some point they have their own agency, which is definitely not going in favor of the ACZ, which tries to go come again to power. And you also have a few surveys done that people, you know, as the kind of this protest went on, the, the support for ACZ was either the same or even falling, so definitely didn't benefit them. So, uh, so maybe, you know, it got out of control, but that's really something that I couldn't find any evidence, so I was looking through a few. Just for a few minutes. Okay, so they were looking at a few um, uh, associations with their document, document, but I couldn't find anything. So, what they do in 2015, uh, they uh, organize a protest in, again at St. Mark's Square, but they don't have any uh, legal rights for it because the law has been changed and they have to back up, but they say there is a scuffle with the police and um, basically it turns a little bit violent and a little bit more uh, uh, concrete. And there's even some guys with gas tanks on the street, which a lot of us remember, which were scary. The point, although they're mostly, I'm not defending them, but they're mostly, it's mostly kind of a, a lot of their um, moves are bust, 
they're bluffs. A lot of them are bluffs. So they're bluffing, but nevertheless, it's scaring people. So uh, that, and that's what's important. And because, because they find the sanctuary in the church itself, it becomes the final symbol of the conflation of the conservative and national values. So they are protected by the church and by the priests who basically stand on the doors and say you cannot enter. Then you have this legal interpretation: can police enter the church because of the uh, Vatican complex uh, edits that we have, and so on and so on. And they are not touched. So they spend uh, uh, one or two nights. They spend in the church, and then they have this meeting with the uh, with the government. Uh, here, if you just feel. Uh, you can see the back of, of the Prime Minister at the time. And these are the war veterans the leaders. And you can see they are in military uniforms. So already they are trying to kind of, uh, impose their own kind of significance towards the civilians. You know? And um, they're still assisting on government concessions. Nothing really happens. You know? And the uh, deals basically um, break off. They return to all narratives. And this also pick up some narratives which they think will model as a general population. One of them is what's happening with this uh, immunological center uh, uh, in Zagreb, who is, uh, it is a publicly owned company which was producing uh, vaccines and so on, which at that time was going through your we will shut them, shut it down or will it get. So they use those issues to kind of attract people. And that's what they, they were doing in 96. They were talking about organization. And if I'm going to ever do an article about that, that would be the article about the lost narratives of the of the of the veterans, because they never now speak about privatization. They speak about politicians being a group, but that's kind of like you you can hear everything. Um, and what they do basically, they are trying to compel to uh, Milanovic the same they try to Tujman as a wise leader, a good leader who is not bad towards themselves, towards them, but it's the the people around him that are informed, they are manipulated. You're great, but those guys are telling you lies. And, but Milanovic doesn't buy to it completely, although later he basically um, he does this in a campaign for 2016 election and then says some chauvinistic stuff, which they, of course, give to the media and then he uh, you know, falls down into the pit of chauvinism from which he never recovered, as you can see. Uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, he, he, you know, when he was still the children, you know, so that's uh, He was playing with nationalism and background. So, um, what happens actually, exactly that the situation involved itself, the central or left coalition loses power. There are two ministers or war veterans who are from their ranks, from the Tentons. One is a short lived nine days or something, world well, record for me. And the other is a guy who is still in power for, what, five days? Deputy, deputy Prime Minister. And Deputy Prime Minister, yeah. And as the, it's gone, just like that, the tank is gone. So, uh, because, uh, you know, um, yes, that kind of power, it's their guy running the show, and it's, it's gone. So, instead of conclusions, um, the banks, all of them are presented as not called, they are not. Um, you know, but still there is agency among the veterans. So um, political affiliation is transparent, but sometimes it's very hard to pinpoint which which moments exactly. Um, protesters want to displace uh, centers of power, so they are the ones you know who are forming the policies. Um, the disabilities are used as credentials, and we said you must have the disability because all both of those protests were started initially by disabled veterans, and but. It doesn't mean the protests aren't authentic. They are, but you know, it really depends how they are formulated, which phase are we talking to, which people we are saying. You know, some of them are definitely political, but some of them not only misled, but they don't uh, they don't think this is politically conscious. They think that you know this is normal. They have maybe a lower level of political culture. So for them, you know, they they don't like democracy in the sense, you know, the deliberating most, you know, non-stop discussions or whatever. They want certain rules which are sacred and untouched. So um, I think I'll end here. Thank you very much.